Hey everyone, it's Adam, and in this video, the goal is to lay the groundwork for testing the Compute Module 4 clones for their ability to work in my PSP board. This will go beyond mere raspberries, and it'll include bananas, oranges, maybe some trees, and even some foxes. And each of these will probably get its own video. I'll explain what needs to be done to each of these to get it working in my board, and I'll use the genuine CM4 to do it. But first, I'll give a quick status update. I've been working mostly on software recently, and I now have the mouse driver working in Ubuntu, I have the mute and volume level indicators working in RetroPie, and the power button now issues a proper shutdown. And I also have it set so that the left switch alternates between a low power mode and a performance mode on the Raspberry Pi. Next, I'll be working on making the hold switch lock the controls and put everything into a power save mode. I'm also rewriting all the drivers, splitting them into separate programs and making them more efficient and easy to understand. I also created a couple operating system images, starting with RetroPie, and the rest of them will come soon. As for the hardware, here is the newest prototype of the PS Pi that I've been testing for a few weeks. And here's the compute module interface and the headphone board. So far the tests are going very well. I posted the newest prototype files on GitHub, and I also created a page documenting the hardware bugs that need manual fixes. I had to make a couple minor tweaks to get audio working correctly, but basically everything else works great. There's no real showstopper bugs in the prototypes, and if you want to get your hands on the board now, you can order them right now from JLCPCB. They generously agreed to sponsor this video, so if you want to order from them, head on over using the first link in the description. You can order just the blank boards without components and place them yourself, or you can pay JLCPCB to assemble the components for you. They also have other services like CNC machining and 3D printing, so check them out if you're interested. I've used them exclusively for PCB manufacturing since 2017, and soon the production version of this board will also be made by them. I'm not quite ready to call this project done, and I'll most likely order at least one more set of test boards, but this newest prototype is functional with those few small tweaks, so this is a way you can get your hands on it more quickly if you want to tinker with one now. Alright, I'll quickly summarize the situation with the clone boards. So the CM4 carrier I'm currently making is very simple. The audio and video come directly from the Raspberry Pi, and are sent through the 40 pin connector. The problem here is that it only works with a genuine compute module and I'll explain why. The video interface I use on my projects is called DPI, which stands for Display Parallel Interface. It directly drives an LCD using the GPIO pins. It uses up to 24 pins for the color data and between two and four pins to clock the data in. This is a very cheap and very low power method of displaying an image on an LCD because the Raspberry Pi supports it natively. The problem though, is that none of these clone boards have this interface. This means that I have to make a special carrier board for each of these clones that adapts their interface into DPI. That process will probably take months to do, and I'm just beginning now, so I don't yet have a carrier for the clones. Instead, I'll be demonstrating the situation using two screens from Big Tree Tech, and the goal here is to get some group feedback before starting the PCP design. So now I'll walk you through the two video interfaces that are available in all these clones, and I'll explain what the plan is for them. And I'll start with HDMI using the Big Tree Tech Pad 7 as a carrier and as a display. This uses HDMI for video, but it has an adapter chip internally that turns the HDMI signal into that same DPI interface that I mentioned a moment ago. So let's get the Compute Module 4 working on this. To do that, I have to configure some things. First, I have to set a single GPIO pin high at boot up to turn the LCD backlight on. Without this, the screen remains dark. To do that, I have to add a couple lines to the config.txt file on the SD card. These are the lines that set the GPIO high at boot up, and in this case, it's setting GPIO 14 high. I also have to set a custom resolution for the HDMI port to match the resolution of the internal LCD panel, and that's done using these other lines. So I'll copy these to the same config.txt, just below the other ones. And let's try booting it up. Alright, so it boots fine, and the image looks great. So that was very straightforward, and we now have a booting system with video and everything working. And this is a method I can use for the universal carrier board. It should be pretty easy to set the custom resolution on most of the clone boards, and the converter chip will do all the work. The problem though is power usage, because these HDMI to DPI chips typically use a lot of it, at least for a handheld battery powered system. The CM4 boards already use a lot of power themselves, and this would just increase the amount of heat produced and reduce the battery time that much more, so I kind of want to avoid this route if possible. 
There is a better option using a different chip such as the one used in the Pad 5. This one is useful to me because of the way the display functions. The Pad 5 uses DSi for video and uses a common DSi to DPI chip that adapts the video signal for the LCD and this is exactly what I plan to do on the advanced carrier board for the PS5 6. DSi stands for Display Serial Interface and it transmits the same information as the Display Parallel Interface but as the name suggests it transmits color data in a serial manner over a high speed interface that uses fewer pins. The Pad 5 is basically a clone of the official Raspberry Pi display, so to get this working on the CM4, I just need to copy the same file that enables the Raspberry Pi display to the SD card. Once I do that, it boots and works. The benefit of this chip over HDMI is a lower cost and a lower power usage. The interface though is not as simple as DPI, but I still hope that I can get a few of these clone boards working with it. Some of the companies such as Luckfox have already released images with DSi enabled, so I expect those to be pretty easy to get working. All right, so that's the current situation with the clone boards and the carrier. I'm gonna work on this stuff off and on for probably the next couple of months, so feel free to contact me if you think you can help in any way, or if you know of any different CM4 clone boards that I didn't mention here. And if anyone has any thoughts or opinions about the video interface, definitely let me know. My focus is still mostly on the genuine Pi boards and just getting everything polished so I can get this PS Pi ready to sell. There's still a lot of prep work that goes into mass production, and I'm trying to pre-order everything that might go out of stock over the next couple of months. Like I said before, I've been working a lot on software over the last few weeks, and I'm just trying to add the remaining features to the drivers and to the firmware. I'm also aware that the Raspberry Pi 5 is about to come out, and at first glance it appears it'll be compatible with my board, but I won't know exactly for sure until I get my hands on one. I pre-ordered one, so hopefully it'll be in my hands soon. And obviously this won't fit into the PSP case, but I wanna make sure it's at least electrically compatible with the PS5. I'll probably order a small batch of prototype boards within the next couple of weeks. And this is what should be the final production board, but I have to test it out to make sure before I mass produce. So keep an eye on my Discord and GitHub pages if you want more information on that. And as a thanks to everyone still watching the video, I also wanna let you know I'm doing a giveaway on my Discord channel. I'm doing two drawings for sets of PS5 6 and headphone boards. One drawing will be for members of the Discord, and the other drawing will be for supporters. And there's links to that in the description if you're interested. So that's it for now. You can follow along with the progress on Discord and GitHub if you want constant updates. Or you can follow here on YouTube or Twitter if you just want occasional ones. And finally, this is an open source project, so if any of you want to contribute, I definitely welcome it. You can also help by spreading the word and sharing the project with others. And if anyone wants to contribute monetarily, that's also greatly appreciated. I have links in the description if you want to check them out. All right, thanks for watching.